Hey there, it's me, Oz again from Brownout Studios. And if you're watching this video, you're either a songwriter or a music producer that's trying to get your music into sync licensing opportunities. And you just really wanna understand the process of what it is to make that happen. By the end of this video, you're gonna actually not only understand the Brownout Studios way of actually doing it, but you're gonna understand how to pass your music along to anybody that's in the music industry forever. So, are you ready? At Brownout, we submit our clients' music to supervisors, ad agencies, record labels, and other places as well, because we understand that that's a great way to round out all of the income levels that an artist or a songwriter actually has. And remember, those four places that you can actually earn money as a music person is downloads and streams and physical sales, right? So downloads and physical sales. And then also you have your, your streams and your online content as well. And then you have your shows and your merchandise as an artist as well. And then the final way is film and TV. So let's talk first about the actual lifestyle of a music supervisor. Cause I think that you guys really need to understand that process first and foremost. I mean, the deadlines are always tight for these guys and there's just so much music that they have to go through. So imagine just for yourself, when you're submitting your song and you're thinking, this is the song, this is the thing, this is what I really want for you to do, and please just listen, 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 okay? When you're actually doing that to a music supervisor, I want you to realize that they're probably getting thousands of that. And you know they would love to listen, but the problem is, is that there's just so much to listen to. So they can't obviously listen to everything. And a lot of times they're going to ignore what most people send because it's just, just too much most of the time. So they rely on people like us, these, these licensing agents, to go out there and, and curate and get them the right pieces that they're looking for. So our job becomes that same kind of a process. Our job really is to go through all the submissions that you guys send to us, okay? So now that you have a, a little bit of a picture that I've got, personally, hundreds, sometimes thousands of music pieces that I need to listen to in order to figure out which ones to submit over to the agent. Now we come to the problem of making sure that your music has everything that they need, that they're going to need moving forward so that there's no questions, there's everything's like all in order. This is all about the metadata, okay? So the job, first of all, is to make sure I look over the brief, and interpret the scene or the mood. So just because you have a great song doesn't necessarily mean that it actually fits that particular scene or the mood. You may love the song, may love the mix. Those things are important. Got to have a great song first, and then a great mix is awesome. But if it doesn't fit the need, then it doesn't matter, right? So, um, so I have to listen to each one of those songs and make sure it uh, fits that particular mood. I have to organize after I, you know, selected a bunch. This is what we call like um, um, shortlisting, right? After I select a bunch of the the right songs that I think are fitting the mood, now I have to go through and make sure that it fits a playlist. So I have to, you know, how, how you normally do it. It's like a mixtape. That's what, that's what we are, as uh, agents are doing for the supervisors, for the ad agencies. We're putting together like a playlist that we think when they're listening to it, it tells the story, all of the songs in there tell the story of that particular scene idea that we've kind of put together based off of what their brief is at that particular moment. And then uh, after we've done that, we have to make sure that everything is legal. Everything has to be 100% legal. Now that I've got my playlist together and I've got the right idea together, I have to make sure that what I submit to them is, is organized in a way that when they go to put it into their show or their TV opportunity, that it actually is legal. It works. So what is that? That's metadata. So when you're submitting your work, you need to actually like make sure that you uh, are, don't confuse the music supervisor with the right having by ha having the right metadata in place. So let's take a look at what construes like perfect and really good sound metadata. Okay. There's a couple of great applications that allow you to do metadata. Um, it's all the behind the scenes. Metadata is basically that file information that gets captured. Uh, and, and, and put along with your file when it gets downloaded by other people so that they know exactly the right ownership for that particular song. So there's a bunch of applications that allow for you to put this in. One of the ones that I like the best because it actually helps you organize your music really well and it also helps you to, uh, you know, obviously put in the metadata for AIFF files 
and also for MP3 files. Those are the types of files that actually allow for you to capture metadata and, and, and maintain the metadata. WAV files do not, but this, this tool, disco.ac here, actually allows for you to uh, um, upload WAV files and then it automatically makes an MP3 file or an AIFF file. And then from there, you can put in all of your, your, your prescribed data as well. So I'm gonna go over to my system and let's actually talk about what you're doing when you're actually adding in metadata. So I have a track over here, it's called Boom, and I put a nice picture there just so that you get the idea of what the song's all about. So that helps uh, only for the purpose of just simply having a nice display uh, of the picture. Some people put their, their face up there. It doesn't really matter what that picture is. It just helps to round out the actual total thing of the song. Put the title, of course, put the artist uh, that the, um, belong the song belongs to. And then uh, you're gonna put, what I like to put here in the album, because other people are downloading it for free, right? And they're, they're downloading it and they may later on, so a lot of times what supervisors will do is they'll download the song and they'll download the entire playlist and then they'll say they're gonna come back to it and they'll listen to it later on when they have more time. When they do that, if you don't have any information in here, they have no idea of how to contact you. Duh, you gotta at least have that much. So I like to put, as, as opposed to the name of the album that this came from, because that doesn't help them understand who to get the, who to call when that happens, when they download it. I just put the, al the, uh, the album information, I put, the, the, I put the, the, the contact information of where to reach me specifically whenever they download the song like that. What it does for them is if I go to play the song, if I just simply just, you know, uh, play this particular track, as I'm playing the song, I can see the title, I can see the artist, and I can see who to call immediately, just by simply just hitting the space bar on my Mac, for example. Um, that information, I believe, also shows up somehow on PCs as well, too. But the point is, is that they, when they put it inside of, you know, any type of application, whether that be iTunes to listen, or if they're putting it inside of any other, you know, uh, PC-based application as well, too, it shows up that information. So it's a great way to make sure that really quickly they know who to contact whenever there's a problem, which is great, right? And so, um, and then the next thing that I do, of course, you put the composer in the genre, those things are important, but then let's go to the comments. The comments is the, probably the first most important thing that you're gonna put in there. Actually, probably the second most important thing, because you're putting the album information, the contact information there first. I also put their contact information again in the comments, and then I also put writer and publisher information as well. Now, when you're putting writer and publisher information, don't just put your name and that's it. You gotta put your name, you gotta put your IPI number, that's your, uh, the number, that's the, uh, the number that uh, is your subscriber information for either your, your PRO, so that's BMI, ASCAP here in the United States, CSAC is another one here in the United States, PRS is one over in, in the UK, and there's a bunch, there's, every country has their own, either one, two, or three, performance rights organizations that you're gonna be dealing with on a regular basis. So put your your pro, mine happens to be BMI, uh, put your ID information for your, your, your pro, and then put the actual ownership stake for each writer that's on the track. If there's more than one writer, make sure that the split's equal 100% for the writer's share, okay? Um, or the total amount. In some cases, like uh, ASCAP, for example, only goes 50% for writers and then 50% for publishers. BMI does 100% for writers and 100% for publishers for a total of 200%. It doesn't matter. It needs to equal the 100% share of the writer's portion of this. And then uh, you need to do that same thing for the publishing. So who owns the actual publishing of the track, okay? Now usually publishers also own masters, and, and the master, just so that you understand the difference there, is the, the actual uh, recording. The masters is the actual recording of that particular song. So to make it even more confusing, you can be a writer of a track and still the owner of a track. And what happens there, you might send your publishing off and someone else owns your publishing, but they own that particular master of the publishing. You can have someone else sing that song, a whole new version of it, and that particular publisher may have nothing to do with that particular master. So 
licensing and, and stuff, it gets really confusing. But the bottom line of what I wanna tell you about there is that you need to put the publisher information, put the writer information, so that not only do I know the name of the publisher, I know the IPI of that particular publisher as well, which performance rights organization do they belong to, and the stake that they have in that particular song. Okay, so even if you're self-published, you can still say publishing owned by your name or whatever, and then you know, you'll know you say self-published. That way everybody knows that it's self-published. Finally, you might wanna put some more description information of the track so that you know whenever they're just doing a search, so uh, tools like Disco, for example, allows for me to just search for a feeling that I want for my track to actually have for this particular you know, placement that I'm looking for. So I can say I want something that's happy, I want something that's R&B, I want something that's whatever, right? And so they can type in all these little things inside of here that helps them to figure out which particular track they're gonna use. Now what also helps is the lyrics because I told you that it does a search, right? It does a search and most of these guys have tools that they're doing this same kind of a search on, it searches within the lyrics as well too. So having your lyrics there is a great way also to, to give you more metadata. Metadata, metadata, metadata all the way, okay? So make sure that your lyrics are in, in the, your metadata. Make sure that comments is very thorough as far as understanding who it actually belongs to and how they get paid. Now, why is that particular part important? Because what happens there is, let's say it's a TV show, let's say it's even a commercial. Um, the song will go to a TV show and then they, they know they're gonna play it one time specifically. They know they're gonna play it that one time. So it gets aired on this particular day on a particular network. What happens if it goes into syndication? Hmm, hadn't thought about that, right? If that particular TV show goes into syndication or that ad goes from a, a local ad and then they now want to place that ad in a global or a regional or a nationwide type of a manner, then they're going to want to know how to pay you again. And if all they have is, you know, Ozzy Brown, well, duh. I don't know who that is. I have no clue. But if you tell me that it's BMI and this particular IPI number is the writer, and here are all the writers on that particular track, and all of their information as well too, and their splits, then I can submit a cue sheet over to BMI that says, hey, I played this particular commercial, or I played this particular um, uh, episode again over in these particular places, this particular network, wherever, wherever, doesn't matter, and here's, how, who, here's all the people that you need to pay for it. Now they have all the information that they need. They don't need to contact, contact you again. It's called mailbox money. We all want that. Some people have called it even house music. Why? Because you can keep on buying a house with that particular kind of music, right? Beautiful thing. So I really want you guys to understand that particular process of what we agents go through, that supervisors go through, that showrunners go through, that it goes on and on, ad agencies. They all go through the same type of process. Um, to listen to your music and make sure that it's right for their opportunity. So, if you're sending me music, which you can do that just by this link here below, you can send me music at any time, and my team will all listen to that particular song, make sure that it's the, the right fit for the particular placements that we get, and it's the same across the board. Whenever you're submitting your music to anyone for consideration, you should probably be doing these kinds of things. Hopefully, that was helpful. Anyway, love you guys. As usual, you can contact me anytime. Talk to you soon. Yeah.